Precious Father, we come and follow with you this morning. Thank you, Andy Father, for your goodness and your tender mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Andy Father, for the opportunity, Andy Father, for me to come before your throne, Lord. Yes. Ask you, Andy Father, you to touch our minds, Andy Father. Yes, Lord. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, let your will be done in our lives, Andy yes. Father. Yes. Lord, we ask you, Andy Father, you to bless the services this morning, Andy Father. Yes, Lord. Give us a high time in your name, Lord. Yes. Let your anointing, Andy Father, come in the building, Andy Father. Because we know, Heavenly Father, you know what it comes, Heavenly Father, you destroy the yokes, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father Jesus, to build up us, Heavenly Father Jesus. Make us strong in your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, Father, remember the bereaved family, Lord Jesus, this morning. Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, deliver them, Heavenly Father, right now, Lord. Yes. Remember those, Heavenly Father, Jesus, in the hospital, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Touch their bodies, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give them a mind, Andy Father, you to be able to do your will, Father. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, Father, continue, Andy Father, you to have a bless our homes, Andy Father. Yes. Make our homes homes of prayer and peace, Andy Father, and not homes of confusion, Lord. Yes, Lord. In your mighty name, Jesus. And Lord, we ask you, Andy Father, you to continue, Andy Father, Jesus, ever give us peace of mind, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we may be able to do your will, Father. Yes. In your mighty name, be for your sake, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
But at the end of the day, God gets all of the glory. Amen. 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 I just want to tell you, I like them jerseys, man. <laughs> I wear an X twice. <laughs> and I love the number five. <laughs> Lord. Amen. Um, I just want to say bless God this morning. I'm honest here from New Jersey. She just celebrated her 80th birthday on Friday. Okay. We're watching the rest of the this is actually my wife's great aunt. And um, what's so awesome about it is, is they flew her and Uncle Hank before he passed. They flew all the way from New Jersey um, to be the one of the intricate parts of our wedding. They made sure they they sold it to us and told us what the key was to a successful marriage. And then the day that we launched uh, Garden of Praise, now almost nine years ago, her and Uncle Hank were sitting right there in the front row, making sure that they were supporting. And when you have that kind of love and support, you're grateful because there are people that wish they had family mm. just to wake up to and say, I love you. Amen. So when you have that family, and they don't call me in law. They they just they call me in love. Amen. So I'm grateful that um, I have been accepted in the family and that they treat me just like I've been there all my life. So she's going to be flying home. She said I have to give me some service in. So she came. She's on her way back home. She gets on a plane at 11 o'clock this morning. So let's pray for her traveling grace. Amen. 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 But in the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, she says, "I'll be back." <laughs> Yeah, thank God for that. Amen. Let's continue to keep Mother Maddie. She didn't put herself on the prayer list. But let's make sure that we include her on the prayer list, especially as she is preparing for her eye surgery. Let's make sure that we do that. Welcome back there, sister. Kate, Kate. Amen. I told them you better not drink too much Kool-Aid while you're gone. You had no Kool-Aid? Sweet tea with lemonade in it? No. All right, I'm making sure. <laughs> you hear smiling and then all pretty full stuff. So we welcome back. Amen. Amen. Lady West, how are you this morning? I thought you, I see you there. I thought you was going to bless us with a song. <laughs> Mother Maddie let you off the hook this morning. Praise <laughs> Amen. But we can't pop. I see you back there. Why y'all ain't gave him no jersey? Yeah. <laughs> Pop, it's okay now. Oh, son, it's okay now. You just down there. You got to be sharp. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You got to be Every single day. Pop, I'm sharp. I'm sharp. Amen. Amen. Wear your jersey, Pop. It's all right. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone. Let us, I just want to share something with you this morning from the Gospel according to Matthew. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 8. And we're going to look at the verse. We're going to begin at verse number 23 when you have it. Matthew's 8, 23. When you have it, just stand to your feet. In reverence to the word of God. To my, to my drummer, drummer. Good morning, young man. Looking good. You start laughing this morning. I said, boy, oh boy. Uh, 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 it was a sound that was refreshing. Keep that, that energy, man. It's a sound that's refreshing. Um, people need that. Amen. The word of God says, and he got into the boat. His disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm arose on the sea. So that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus kept sleeping. Verse 25 says, So the disciples came and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. Verse 26 says, He said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and he rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. Just for a few minutes, I just want to use as a subject, speak it, and it shall come to pass. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, speak it, speak it. 
be it, and it shall come to pass. Amen. Have your seat. Father, thank you now for this time you've given us to share your word. And I ask you, O oh God, that you allow me to be as transparent as you would. That when people see, they don't see me, but they see you. When they hear, they don't hear me, but they hear you. I ask you, O oh God, that you suppress this old wretched man such as I. Father, that your will be done. I give you praise, honor, and glory now. And I ask, Father, that your word reaches every heart, spirit, and soul. And that you get revelation, God, based off of what you would have for them, not only to do, but to be in this time and season that we're in. We give your name praise. We give your name honor and glory. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I like this story in this passage um, simply because we find now that Jesus is actively moving, uh, showing, completing his ministry, but also showing the disciples what they're going to have to continue once he's gone. Kind of puts me in the mind of um, when we have instructors, when we have pastors, when we have teachers, when we have people that are instructing, most of the time what they do is they allow you the instruction, they allow you the lessons so that you're prepared to continue on where they leave off. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Um, um, if we don't prepare our future, if we don't bring our children up, when the Bible says bring them up, in the way that they should go so when they grow old, they won't stray away. Amen. If we don't bring a child up in the admonition of the Lord, if we don't give him the direction by which we were governed by when we were young, if we don't teach them what thus says the Lord when they are younger, how do we expect for them to be successful in God when they get older? Amen. So we find Jesus here. Remember, he had taken 12 ordinary men was putting them in a position to do something extraordinary once he left and in order for them to know what extraordinary looked like they had to walk with him and experience the things that he was experiencing have i got a witness Amen. and here we find that as jesus begins to go on and he begins to do miracles and he begins to make establish who he is and the authority that he had been given we now find that the disciples are following him and they find themselves in a very, very uncompromised position. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. The one thing that I like about this is this particular passage of scripture, it shows us some things. The one thing that I want you to see that it shows us is when he says his disciples followed him. Mm -hmm. In that, I would that you understand that if you're following Jesus, it doesn't matter what danger appears to be, you're following the one who controls the outcome of danger. Amen. I wish I had somebody. Amen. If you're following Jesus, he, he said in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He, he, his word says, his word says that when he speaks, things begin to happen. His word says, his word says that, that life and death is in the power of our tongue, but he's the controller of all of, come on here somebody. But the Bible lets me know that he has the power and the authority in heaven and on earth. So if I'm following him, then I couldn't be following danger, but what I'm following is I'm following my protection. Have I got a witness? And it doesn't matter what I'm going through. If I'm following him, that means he's in it with me. Mm. Have I got a witness? When, 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 when the song writer, when the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the shadows of the valley of the valley of the shadows of death, he says, I'm gonna walk through because I'm not going to fear because of who's with me. The rod and thy staff, that they're with me. In other words, Grace and mercy is with me. In other words, the spirit of the living God is with me in the midst of the valley of death. And now I want you to understand something. Because he's with me, it cannot take me out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't believe here, I, I'm looking at the disciples, they are at a position where they're following him. I still believe when we get to the end of this, it simply says that they're now questioning, asking what kind of man is this? Mm -hmm. So that's an indication that they still haven't grasped the fact that he is not no ordinary man. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, and that's the amazing thing about us because sometimes we follow all the wrong people because they got a whole lot of fluff. 
<laughs> and we're amazed by the fluff, but yet and still we find that there's no substance with the fluff, but we're still enthused about the fluff. Have I got a witness? But here we couldn't have fluff because Jesus was trying to establish his authority with them so that he could give them the power of the same authority. Have I got a witness? So now we find that he is, his, his disciples are following him. And the Bible tells us that Jesus told us if we want to be like him, that we ought to take up our cross daily and follow him. Amen. 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 Which simply means that we're going to follow him into situations that we know for ourselves that our physical nature is not ready for. But if we're following him, he's showing us how to cause this flesh to fall subject to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now we got a witness. Amen. Then we find the next thing that is prominent in this particular passage is... He says, suddenly a violent storm hmm. arose. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's given us a story about something, a scene about something that's happening. But I need us to be able to look at the scene and make this, uh, uh, put it in our life and put it in the pathway, Josh, of our life so that we can understand that the boat that they were in is usually the boat, the heart, the body that we carry. And storms that come means that these storms of life is not something that just comes by happenstance. Amen. James says in James chapter 1, he says, count it all joy when. Yeah. So in other words, because of whose I am, Josh, I'm going to go through some storms. I'm, a, a storm is nothing but a trial in your life. A storm is nothing but a test in your life. A storm, a storm is something that's going to try your patience. A storm is something that's going to try to get you to lose focus. But a storm is a faith builder. A storm is something that's going to help you sustain in the midst of things you don't understand. A storm is something that's going to cause you to get stronger, not just in your faith, but get stronger in your profession of who you are and understanding that when Jesus says, I've given you authority, I've given you the power to speak those things that are not as though they were, a storm will cause you to try it and find out that it really works in the name of Jesus. Yeah, so when we look, we understand now that they were following and we understand that storms are things that represent the trials, the tests that comes in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we find that before we got here, we found that Jesus was speaking to different people and he was speaking to a man and he told the man, he says, one of the disciples said, I got to go and bury my father, and Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Hallelujah. He says, I need you to get it together and come follow me. Yeah. Because what you're going to do has no significance in what you need to be prepared to go and do. All right. I've got a witness. We got folks that won't come to church on Sunday morning because they got to go and wash their car. Amen. <laughs> We got folks that want to come to church on roof on Sunday morning because it's a good sale at Macy's. We got folks that don't want to come to church pop on Sunday because it's the playoffs. I want to make sure that I catch the game from the very beginning. We got folks that don't want to come to church on Sunday because they tired because they had a long week. And Sunday is the only day that they can get some rest. Baby, I come by to tell you, you better sacrifice your Sunday that you want to rest. And you better rest yourself in the house of the Lord because you need to be equipped for the storms that are going to come throughout the week. Have I got a witness? So now we find here that he is speaking to the disciples as they follow him. Well, he's speaking, and then the disciples follow him, and they get into the boat. The amazing thing about this is I found that Jesus already knew what was going to happen before anyone entered into the boat already. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. In other words, Jesus knows your end before you even recognized your beginning. Right. And with that being said, Jesus went into this boat already knowing what was going to happen because remember he has authority and power over all things and I do believe that he allowed for watch this remember nothing can happen that is not already given permission from God to happen anyway so the waves got to obey him the, the birds have got to obey him the devil has got to obey him and they cannot function and do what they do unless they first have 
permission by the master. So when Jesus gets into this boat, he goes down and can if I can just be if I can just be me, Josh, he, he went down into the bottom of the boat and started chilling. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. Matter of fact, he chilled so much that he went to sleep and he got into a sleep where he was like, it don't matter what's going on around me. Ain't nothing going to bother me because I realize uh -huh. the greater is he. All yeah. right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we find that when he gets into the boat, watch this. Remember, he's in the boat with the disciples, even though he wasn't in the same place at the same time with the disciples. I want somebody to catch this. I want somebody to catch this. You don't have to believe that Jesus is standing right beside you to understand that his presence is still right beside you. If he's all-knowing, if he's omnipotent, if he's omnipresent, then that means when you're on the other side of town, just because you don't see him on the other side of town, because he's everywhere all the time, he's on the other side of town. And what we've got to do is we've got to be the housing that have him in our heart. So when we're on the other side of town, if he's in our heart, he's on the other side of town. Come on here, somebody. He is where you take him. And he is where you don't welcome him because he is everywhere. But when you take him with you, I come to find out, when you take him with you, things that want to get you can't get you the same way they would if he wasn't with you. All right, all right, yeah. I heard you, Mother Maddie, when you said that it was a, 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 a big rig Mm -hmm. Tried to take out Pastor West, but what he didn't understand is Pastor West had praise coming from the north. Pastor West had praise coming from the south. Pastor West had praise coming from the east. And Pastor West had praise coming from the west. And it wasn't something that he did that particular day, but he understood through every torn and test that he's gone through, Jesus always rose up and said, Peace. Be yeah. still. And because of the relationship and the sold outness that he has for Jesus. Jesus had already sent down his angels to encamp themselves around what the devil thought he was going to do. He said, I might let you shake him up, but you're not going to shake him out. And this right here, I need you to understand that this storm ain't for him, but it's for somebody that's looking and need to get a relationship with God and find out, how did you walk out of that? He says, if it had not been for the Lord. Uh, 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 the devil, the, the, the disciples even got to the place where they, they asked the question before, how do you get this kind of power? Well, I, I, I would that in that spiritual warfare, Pastor West, you allowed them boogers to know this kind of power only comes through prayer and fasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't understand the sacrifices that I have to make, not just for me, but for everybody that's counting on me. And when the enemy comes to take me out, that means somebody is looking at me. It ain't nothing but a storm that Jesus has to stand up every once in a while. Yeah, and say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be still. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. So now we find that these disciples, and this is what I find to be interesting, especially in pastoring. We'll go through storms in front of the people that God allows us to shepherd mm -hmm. because they need to see how we handle the storm. Mm -hmm. Because it's a lot of people that are do what I see faster than they do what I hear. Uh -huh. Mike, somebody can get a very, very good analogy of how to do it when they can see somebody do it. Yes, sir. Oh, I wish I had a witness. And therefore, sometimes a pastor's life is private, but it is also transparent. Amen, amen. Because we can't always tell you the intricate parts of what we're going through, but we can tell you that we are going through something. All right, all right. But what we need you to look at is the fact that because we're going through, we don't stop going to. <laughs> because we're going through something, we don't stop reading our Bible. Because we're going through something, we don't stop getting on our knees. Because we're going through something, we don't stop tithing. Because we're going through something, we don't stop seeking the face of God. Because we're going through something, we don't stop going out in the community and helping people. Because we're going through something, our service to God and for God doesn't stop. But while we're going through, we're more productive with the things that we do for God 
when we're going through than we do when we're not going through nothing. Why? Because I understand that what I'm going through is only pushing me closer to where I'm going to. Amen. But I was on a boat at one time where I didn't understand, but somebody had to show me along the way. That's why I'm glad that mama kept me exposed to grandmamas of the church and mamas of the church. Because when mamas and grandmamas was going through something, it seemed like the praise seemed to get so... Have you ever been in that church where you walked in and, and the praise was so thick? And, then, and you walk in and you couldn't help but to get saturated by the Holy Ghost. And the reason why is because there was some mothers that was either going through something that was giving God their all or just came from something that was giving God their all. But you never knew they were going through anything because what did they say? They said, I'm going to give it and leave it in the hands of the Lord. And what I'm going to speak on my behalf is peace be still while I'm waiting on God to move this thing out of the way. Yes, sir. These disciples were moving with Jesus, but yet they still haven't grasped hold to the fact that he is who he said he was. Amen. They haven't grasped hold to the fact that there were miracles that he was performing that we knew that only he was able to do. Uh, but yet now we find ourselves in the midst when he's with us. He may have been in a different compartment, but he's with us. Yeah. And now we're in the middle of this boat and we're, 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 we're afraid to the place where we believe it, that the storm is going to take our life. Has anybody been here that has gone through a storm, that have gone through a storm in your life and you felt that it was so bad that it was about to take you out, that you just felt like you wasn't going to make it another day? Come on here. I hope everybody in here ain't super saved that you ain't been there. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell the truth and shame that Devil. I have been through some storms recently where I thought, boy, if this is my last day, Lord Jesus, I start speaking some things and come on here, somebody. But we go through these things because I need you to know that in order for God to, to, to make it known that we can go to the next level, we have to show him that we can pass the test with the storms on the level that we're on. Yes. Have I got a witness? You can't ask for more from God if you can't handle the little that he's already given you. How, how can you ask him for more faith when you don't even exhibit the little faith that you say you have? How, how can you ask him for a house and you don't even take care of your one bedroom apartment? How, you want a new car, but you don't even take care of the little bitty bucket that you got. You, you want more from God. Lord, I want healing virtue, but God can't let you heal because you don't even know how to forgive. I need somebody to catch this. How can you ask for more from God? If you can't handle the little that he's already entrusted. Yeah. If you don't believe that, go and read Matthew's about the talents. The parable about the talents. He said, I gave them according to what they were able to handle. Yeah. Yeah. And even the one that got one didn't handle his one well enough. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So we find that now these disciples, disciples, listen to me. Disciples, followers of Christ. Disciples that saw Jesus move. Disciples that saw Jesus heal. Disciples that saw Jesus uh, give sight to the blind. Disciples that saw him give, uh, give hearing to the mute. The disciples still doubted because now they're faced with a storm that was bigger than what they understood. And instead of them utilizing, watch this, watch this. Have you ever noticed, Mother, Mother you can attest to this. See, with the church, you, you, you have your business account. Uh -huh. And can't nobody write a check or take money out of that business account unless they have been authorized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when they have been authorized, that means they have been given the same amount of authority to handle the account as you have. Amen. And when Jesus came down, he was preparing for them to be authorized to use the same power that he had because he was leaving but needed the same work to go on. Have I got a witness? And this is our problem. Some of us don't understand that we have been authorized to speak to the atmosphere and the atmosphere must obey us because of him that resides on the inside of us. Come on here somebody. The reason why you're going through so much hell is because you refuse to speak with authority that hell has got to cease because peace is something that's been given by God and when you speak it out of your mouth by the authority given by Jesus, it must obey. And Chantel said, your spirit, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, either that book is going to shut up, they're going to back up and leave. Because when you profess it out of your mouth, through the faith of God that should be residing in your heart. Amen. You speak it and heal it. My heal allow it to happen. Amen. I want somebody to catch this. Amen. And that's why the Bible says 
that the power of death and life, the death and life is in the power of the tongue. You've got to understand that when you speak things, you better, you better know what you're speaking. Because when you speak bad things, it comes to pass. When you speak good things, it comes to pass. When you speak it in the name of Jesus, it comes to pass. But when you understand your position and your authority, you can speak things and it'll help somebody around you that may never, ever, ever know who you are or who you are. But they'll know that there's something about you that helps this whole atmosphere to be right. When you stand up, sometimes you ain't got to speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your heart. Speak it out of your mind. Speak it out of your spirit. Sometimes, if I can't say another word, I'll just wave my hand. That, that's a song. So we find these disciples now, they're upset. You're honest, they, they woe us me. And, and I'm, I, can I just be honest with you? I'm tired of these wars, me Christians. Mm -hmm. In church all your life, got big Bibles, always running around, the music going on, they shouting up and down the aisles. And the moment something happens, they don't read, they don't activate nothing that they carry. Mm -hmm. Should I say, they ain't reading it, they carry it. Yes. And activate it. Isn't it amazing that somebody's been carrying the same Bible for about 27 years and the pages are still sticking together because they've been new and nobody's done it? <laughs> and you wonder why you're going through so much hell and high water. Well, they said the Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth. And if the Bible is the manual on how we're supposed to make it happen, read this thing and then you can be able to speak those things that are not as though they were. You can tell your situation that you have to have peace. You can tell the enemy to back up off of you. I wish I had. You can tell sickness to leave. You can allow those old evil spirits not to come around you. Why? Because if you read the word of God, it's in your heart. If Jesus is in your heart, then you've got everything you need to activate when it's time for it to be activated. You just got to believe it. Yeah. So the Bible says that these, these disciples were afraid and they go down and wake Jesus up. They woke Jesus up to do the same thing that they were given power and authority to do. Can I help somebody right here? Mm -mm. That's why sometimes at 2.30 in the morning when somebody called and say, pray for me, my new thing is, I'll pray with you as you pray for you. Amen, amen. Because if God has given you the same power to pray and claim victory over your circumstance, then why am I praying for you and you ain't praying for yourself? Because I need you to understand that what begins to happen is you dump your burden on me and go back to sleep. And now I'm up the rest of the morning Toss and determine with your burden yeah. that you didn't even seek God for yourself. I come by to tell you that pastors and preachers are not your UPS, they are not your FedEx, they are not your DHL. <laughs> they are not your postal service. We are not your express delivery service. And, and we don't get a prayer through no, no more better than you can get a prayer through. The difference is we believe that our prayer gets through. And you just believe only when you want something that your prayer gets through. But I come by and tell you, if you pray without ceasing, it don't matter what you're going through. If you store a little bit of something up, then you can pull a little bit of something down when you need it. But if you don't give up nothing, then you ain't got nothing to get. I, I, I dare you to not put no money in your bank and stick your ATM card in and try to get something out. It ain't no different than with Jesus. If you don't give him a praise, then how can you activate your hallelujah? If you don't, come on here somebody. If you don't put the word in you, how can you pull it out of you when you need it the most? How can the Holy Spirit bring something to your remembrance that you ain't even put in your memory bank? So the disciples lost sight of everything that Jesus was doing. The Bible says that they woke him up. And the first thing that he says to them is, why are you afraid? Have I got a witness? Amen. He said to them, why are you afraid? Then he let them know why they were afraid. Mm -hmm. You're afraid because you don't have much faith. Amen. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Are you in a situation to where you're afraid of the outcome because you are lacking the faith that is needed? For you to speak those things. Listen, you should have enough faith to sit back and say, if I, if this situation don't come out the way I want it to come out, it's going to come out the way God says it comes out. So I win either way it goes. Why? Because if I come out of this situation, 
situation. And man says it's for my bad. I need you to know that God says that what the enemy meant for my bad, he'll turn it around for my good. All right, all right. If I go in for foot surgery and I come out one foot less, I should not complain that I came out one foot less. I should come out that I still got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of me and my foot should not hinder my praise. Amen. And the people say, Josh, you, now you can't get on the good foot. But I come by to tell you that my foot is not what's good. Amen. But it's my intentions through my heart. It's my intentions right. through, my, through my relationship with God that's good. Now watch this, watch this. Because two feet ain't going to get me into heaven no faster than one feet. Amen. Because if I haven't been traveling right with my two feet. <laughs> and I know some people that ain't got access to no feet. Yeah. That's full of faith. Yeah. And get things done. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So we got to stop putting so much emphasis on stuff yeah. and put emphasis on Him that provides us with the stuff. Yeah. Because if God is for you, He's more than the world against you. Yeah. And if He's more than the world against you, it doesn't matter. If He gave you limbs to move and all of a sudden He took them back, it's His right because they belong to Him. Yeah. And therefore, I need you to understand if He took my foot, that means He wants to hide in something else that'll help my ministry be stronger. Right, right. Have I got a witness? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because somebody may need to see my faith without being like them to understand that my faith doesn't is not contingent on what I am all to right. man, but it is on who I am to God. All right, all right. So he said to them, why are you afraid? You of little faith. Then he showed them, watch this. Our problem in the churches now is we tell you something, but we don't show you how to make it happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on here. Come on here. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Hallelujah. Most of the time we'll tell you, you ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't the other. And then we say, let's take him an offer and let's go home. But our job should be, if we're going to, Jesus never rebuked his, his, his disciples without explaining to them how to make their right, how to make their wrongs right. 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 He never rebuked them without allowing them to know that he still loved them. Right. So when he told them this, he told them that they had a little bit of faith. You have a little faith. But then he went and showed them how to operate for the next time that they experienced this and he wouldn't be there physically. Amen. The Bible says that he got up and he rebuked. In other words, he told the storms, the winds, and the waves shut it down. Amen. Chill out. We don't need that up in here right now. To give you an example, last Sunday, we were in spiritual warfare at the other church. And last Sunday, it's amazing because when we got in the building, Pastor West, his, I was telling folks, I said, folks was coming up telling me about all that they were going through through the week. And then God just said, see, I told you you're going through some spiritual warfare. So now you're going to find people talking to you about what they're going through, this is an example to let them know that warfare is for real. So it set them up. Then I started having people call me after Sunday telling me about the spiritual warfare. Have I got a witness? But in the middle of service, the assistant pastor got up and says, open up the doors and the windows. It's time for us to rebuke the heavy spirit that's in the house because we wasn't on our post the way we're supposed to be. And old Slewfoot showed up in the building and put a spirit of heaviness in the building. And I told them spiritual warfare is real. And when we all got to the place where we had enough faith to believe that God can chase that booger out, then we can feel the heaviness lift up off. Because what am I talking about? We told the storm that was raging in the building, it's time for you to be still. It's time for you to calm down. Matter of fact, if you're not going to stay and be a part of the service, then you need to kick rocks and go someplace else. Because that's for me in this house. We was able to speak it. Because we believe that we had the power and the authority to make it come to pass. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness in here? And that's what we have to do. We have to stand in the middle of the boat. We have to stand in the middle of the storm. We have to stand in the middle of the trial. We have to stand in the middle of the crisis. We got to stand in the middle of the disappointments. We got to stand in the middle of the heartache. We got to stand in the middle of the sickness. We got to stand in the middle of the confusion. And we've got to speak peace, be still in the name of Jesus. Because as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what I'm going through. Because at the end of the day, I just want to hear him say, Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. And if 
if I can't get past this storm, mm -hmm. how do I ever make it to the next level with a bigger storm? Yeah. Jesus said to the storm, he says, peace, be still. Yes. Watch what I like what it says after that. He says, and the sea, he told the wind to the sea, and there was not just a calm, mm. but there was a great calm. Mm. So in other words, watch this. The storm was out of control. Mm -hmm. Enough to where it scared the men to believe that they were about to die. Mm. Jesus got up and spoke to that same storm. Mm. And the storm was more calm mm. after he spoke Amen. than it was before they got on the boat. Mm. Come on here, somebody. Amen. And watch this. Do I believe that the water was more calm? No. I believe when he spoke to the water, the water calmed, but their spirit calmed down even more mm -hmm. to believe, receive, and understand that they have power and authority. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. And then it says, then the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this that even the sea obey him? Chantel, I want to tell you what kind of man this is. This is a man <laughs> that over 3,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, mm -hmm. the Bible declares that he came down from heaven and took on an earthly body. Mm -hmm. This is the man that was born in a manger. Mm -hmm. This is the same man that the Bible says was wrapped in swaddling clothes. The same man that the wise man came being led by a star to come down and bless him with gifts. Yes, this is the same man that as a young age, the Bible says he marveled and amazed the priest inside of the temple. This is the same man that the Bible declared was a carpenter by trade, but the same man that had an assignment from God. It lets me know that the same man was a man that was all flesh and all incarnal at the same time. In other words, he was all flesh and he was all spirit. He had all power in his hand. This is the same man that went around and called 12 ordinary men and put them in a place where they can be trained to do the things that he was going to need them to do. This is the same man, Bob, the same man that began to heal the sick and to raise the dead. This was the same man, the same man that would give eyesight to the blind. Have I got a witness here? This was the same man, the same man that turned water into wine. This was the same man that would have marveled people every single place that they went. This was the same man, yeah, that did things that no other man could do. And the Bible said that this same man one day was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And not only was he arrested, but the Bible said that they beat him up real good. That they put a crown with thorns around his head. That they whipped him all the way up the hill. That they made him carry an old rugged cross right there on his shoulder. And they told me that when he got up on the hill, the place where they called Golgotha, that they drove nails in his hands. And they drove nails through his feet. They tell me that not only did they drive the nails in his hands and in his feet, but the songwriter said they hung him high and stretched him wide. Yes, they did. They put a sign above his head that said King of the Jews. Yes, they did. The Bible tells me that they whipped him up there and they stuck a spear in his side. Yes, they did. Said blood and water. 
came running down. Yes, they did. He asked us daddy a question. He said, Lord, if it's me that will, take this cup from me. And he didn't hear a word. So he hung there. The Bible says that he hung there for a little while and he healed the robber on one side. Told him he'll be with him in paradise. But what I like about it, mother, is he could have came down when he wanted to. But he stayed there. He stayed there. Because peace had to be still. He stayed there all day Saturday, Friday. He stayed there. The Bible says that when he told his daddy, until I had I commit my spirit. The Bible says it got dark across the land in the middle of the daytime. It says the earth began to shake in the middle of the daytime. It says the veil tore from the top to the bottom in the middle of the daytime. The soldiers that were beating him filmed their face in the middle of the daytime. He died before lunch, he was buried in a bar took the old dinner. But early, 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 early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, with all able to say peace be still peace be still trials be still tribulations be still persecution be still yeah yeah got to stop being overwhelmed by these things called storms because as James says count it all joy when when you became saved and one with Christ you became a moving target for the enemy and I want you to know and understand if you can just keep one thing in your mind that every attack that the enemy sends on you it had to be authorized by him that's in you. Amen, amen. Then I want you to remember too that every attack that comes to you is not always initiated by the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amen. We blame the devil for everything. I guarantee you that sometimes the devil is asking God, why are you always blaming me for stuff? I wouldn't even there. Come on here somebody. Amen. Sometimes we are our biggest enemy. Amen. And then we want to give the enemy too much credit for doing something. Mm -hmm. I come by to tell you that if you can do like David said. David said, Lord, let me hide your word in my heart. Mm -hmm. That it may keep me from sinning against you. Yes. I want you to understand that the moment that you doubt. Mm -hmm. You are sinning against the most high God. Because now you are showing that you don't have the faith that he's telling us to have. Yes. And he only required that we have faith the size of a mustard seed. Amen. And a mustard seed ain't no bigger than the point of a pencil. Mm. And if you don't have that much faith, mm. then that means that something is wrong with your relationship. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? If we can read the word of God on a regular basis, it's just like taking your car to the gas station and filling it up when it gets empty. It needs gas to keep going. Yeah. Mm. You need your faith. Yes. You need your word. Yes, this is what gives you your spiritual oil change. This is what gives you your spiritual tune-ups. This is what keeps gas in your vehicle. Yes. This is right here is the windshield wipers that keeps your vision clear. Come on here, somebody. What? This is the tires that help your vehicle keep moving. Hallelujah. Watch it. And if you don't stay up to date with this Amen. then you can't expect your vehicle to stay up to date with the time mm. 
looking at Pastor West, I see the pain. I, I see, I can see it just on your face. I can see that you're dealing with something. But I come by to tell you that the reason why he's here is because he knows what this is. And he believes this right here. Yes. He understands that with God, he can do all things. Yes. He understands that God is greater than the pain that he might be doing right now. He also understands that his assignment is greater than the trial that he's enduring. Amen. Now watch this. He also understands that there is a blessing attached to the attack Amen. that Amen. wasn't successful. Yes. Amen. 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 The blessing may never hit his hand, <clears throat> but somebody that's connected to him will be blessed as a result mm. of his faith. Amen. Amen. Come on here. Mm. Somebody didn't lose something because he was always praying for them. Come on, somebody. Amen. Mike, you won't catch a big fish soon because I've been praying for <laughs> if it break your pole, you still won't get it in the boat. <laughs> I went fishing one day. He said, somebody told me I wouldn't catch it. Somebody told me, you're a preacher, right? I said, yeah. He said, gas your bed on the other side of the boat. I said, I didn't get on the other side of the front and the back. Ain't no fish out here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I thought that that was good that somebody was reading their word enough that didn't look like us. <laughs> That understood. Don't the Bible say that when the fish weren't catching some, or when the disciples weren't catching some on one side of the boat, he told them to go to the other side? Might that work sometime, no, huh? No. Yeah. But when God is trying to show you something, it's not always going to be tangible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when God is trying to speak to you, it's not going to always be Him speaking yeah. audibly to you. But sometimes he'll speak through someone else. Yes, Lord. And it's amazing how God will be trying to talk to you and he'll speak to you through a commercial on TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then he'll let it be repeated because he'll let a child come in and say to you the same thing. The child is supposed to get to know it. <laughs> if he can let a donkey speak to a prophet, <laughs> he can show up and let a commercial speak to you. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. God is good. Come on, let's celebrate him.